proud supporters of Arts in Focus on PBS 39. Coming up, we'll talk with painter Curtis Jarrett and digital media artist Olivia Olch. It's all next on Arts in Focus. Welcome to Arts in Focus, I'm Emily Henry. Curtis Jarrett has had a knack for painting since the third grade. A self-taught painter, Curtis enjoys the challenge that comes from learning new styles and techniques within his work. Since retiring, he has fully embraced the world of art, creating bold and often surreal works. Curtis, thank you so much for having me to your studio today. Your work is so beautiful and I'm not entirely sure what your influences are, so we'll get to that. But I first want to know when you started thinking of yourself as an artist. Um, after I retired, about okay. eight years ago. I mean, I painted off and on, but uh, until I started doing this and people started calling me an artist. Yeah. It took a while to that to sink in. So when you were a kid, were you interested in art at all? Yeah, well, I, uh, I'll, I'll tell this story because it's my favorite. It's like your first time you paint something. Mm -hmm. uh, third grade, they had a contest and I was a new kid in that school and everybody else was using crayons and I went out and bought oil paints, little tiny oil paints at the five and dime. And I painted a Viking ship on cardboard. The teacher didn't believe me. She practically called me a liar, you know, three times, which at a kid, you go, wow, what's this going on? Yeah. You know, I won anyway. But that right then just kind of set the stage. So you retire eight years ago. Did you always sort of have a plan to, to pick up the oils again? Um, no, I was just sitting around here. I didn't have anything on my walls. <laughs> there was nothing on my walls. Well, I'm just going to, and I wanted to do some, I just started doing balloons mm. because I thought those were fun, yeah, you know, and I could yeah. sell a few. Once you start painting and then uh, you're getting reactions and then it, it's, um, it makes you feel more worthwhile, mm -hmm. you know. When you started painting again um, after retirement, did you have that same feeling you did when you were in third grade? Oh yeah, I capture it when they're close to done. Not the work, ah. but when you start adding color to these, uh -huh. then it's like, it, it's, this is completely opposite than my nature. I'm very impatient. Mm. So it's a war going on. Mm -hmm. So when the snowball gets more color starts coming and then that's when you're back dancing, you know? <laughs> sure. You, yeah. Tell me about the hard part, about the process. How does it begin? Do you sketch first? Do you just have an idea in your mind? No, I throw it at it. I uh, mm -hmm. I I use these drawings, or mm -hmm. I you know, and then I I tape them. I put I put them on a board in here, and put and then I cut them out the cardboard, and then cut them on the tape, and then I take the tape of the picture, of the, the like the butterflies yeah. or flowers. I put them on the canvas, and then I take uh, like uh, grease or yeah. um, uh, and put on that, and then I put another one on top, another one on top, and then I paint. And as I take them off, I paint one below the other one. I have of, never heard of that kind of process. Is that unique to you as far I as guess, you know? I guess. I, I saw this once when I first were painting years ago that someone used it like a moon, you know, mm -hmm. they and you know, make it acrylic and then they paint around it. Well, yeah. I just kind of went to an extreme. I thought, and I'll run things into the ground and I'm still, I don't think I'm done yet. Wow. I think uh, the most I've done is three or four layers. Mm -hmm. I think I could go further, but it would be insane, you know. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Well, call me when you do that, because an insane artist is, yeah. is my cup of tea. Tell me how you come up with your ideas. Like I said, your inspiration seems, um, I can look at different pieces and see different... All these, the flowers and the butterflies and the bees, out yeah. the backyard. I planted sunflowers, uh. and I got, I got a tropics 
back there. People love my backyard because I, I plant all these plants. I'll bring them in inside as much as I can survive. But just seeing that, and mm -hmm. it's very simple. What you see, what you paint, you know. Well, no, I don't know, and here's why. Because I can look at beautiful sunflowers and bees, and I I would have no idea how to go about capturing their, their color and their texture. Was that just innate to you, or it's did it take try, practice? trial and error. I'm just starting to loosen up. You know, some yeah. of them are sur very surreal. Yeah. I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing in some ways. Friends tell me to start loosening up, tightening up. So it's all a process to me. It's like yeah. I'm educating myself as I go. I'm a self-taught, so everything is new and I have to learn and relearn mm. because I can't remember. So <laughs> is that, that, that is frustrating, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah. Is, is being self-taught liberating or is it um, frustrating for you? Well, I would think it'd be liberating because I don't know the word no. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard some people go to school and they hear no's, a friend of mine I was talking about. Um, and I, I can't imagine teachers telling, you know, creative minds, that's my opinion. Sure. Saying no to this, no to that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I, say, I say explore it, you know. So I have nothing in my way. Mm -hmm. How long start to finish does a painting usually take, especially because your process is so unique? Yeah, I, I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> and I'm frustrated because, I, you know, I don't set a timer. Sure. You know, but they can go from 80 hours to 120. I, I don't know because I also stretch my canvases. Okay. I make them. I stretch them. I make my frames now. I just, I do it, do it from the very beginning. And that process is also part of the process. I'm finding out different bases using a uh, gesso or ground, mm -hmm. things like this. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, so mm -hmm. I just stumble across it. Yeah. And then I try it out and then it, it works well. And then I, I sand and try to find the texture that I want to put a, a paint on it, whether with a brush. So it's all education to me, mm -hmm. but it's right up here, you know, mm -hmm. how the paint moves on the canvas. Do you ever, just feel like you have failed. Like you're you're trying to learn, oh, yeah. you're trying to work your way through and you go, well, that didn't work. Oh yeah, the, there's failure and joy. It goes back and forth with me. I'm not, I don't say the same, but I know I have to finish. Mm. And the, so the battle goes on. Mm. And once you finish, even then I go, I don't like it. But then two days later, you know, or day later, whatever that might be, mm -hmm. then you're satisfied, you know. Wow, I see a lot of musical influences. Um, we see trumpets and, and music notes, and wh where is that coming from? I played in band in school. Okay. And the brass, it to me, it, uh, it it's the most in depth. It's like a mirror. You could you could go crazy painting brass mm -hmm. metal mm -hmm. because you could keep getting farther in in detail. It mm -hmm. would drive you insane, mm -hmm. and I would like to go insane. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Do you think that you get better with each painting? Um, I think they're getting better. Uh, that's for someone else to figure out. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, I, I look at the old ones and I like those, mm -hmm. but the new or they're just, they're just changing. I think I'm getting better on like I told you, like trying to loosen up instead of staying uh, tight as I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm, it's like taking ownership of the canvas. It's just hard for me to, mm. I, I find myself catching myself doing that. Mm -hmm. I find I'm taking ownership of this. And that's a kind of a revelation, you know, when you, that's when you, I think that's when you start getting better. Mm. Do you, do you look at all of your work and, and have a critical eye, even if you like it, are you critical of it or oh, do no. you, do you, are you in love with some of them? Oh, it's definitely critical. You, 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 you stay in here and, and you're working on it and it's not good enough, you know, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Then you got to just get away and let it go. Mm -hmm. And it is good enough, mm -hmm. you know. It's just a matter of how much time you want to, how much life you want to spend in that moment. Right, you, you have right. To, you have to move on, mm -hmm. you know? but yeah. Tell me what the biggest challenge is when it, when it comes to your pieces. Price. Oh, okay. That's not what I thought you were going to say. Oh, uh, it's, it's <laughs> selling them. Oh. Uh, my kids laughed at me when I first started this. They said, you act like you're, you're, they're, you're your children, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I just can't see uh, other artists how they do it. You know, I would rather someone just 
come in here and, and put a price on them, get them out. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just rather them just paint. Mm. But that's the hardest thing for me is to let them go, you know, or just sell them. Sure. I said, I got space. I, it's not like I'm making a living like some people do. And right. I, I could appreciate their life, but I got places I can put them in here. Sure. I finally come to that conclusion, I don't have to. Mm. But it was a war all the time. Now, since you took up painting really seriously after retirement, does it make you wish that you had started really seriously sooner? Oh yeah, well that teacher, you know, instead of criticizing me and not believing me, maybe there's kids out there, you know, I know there are, that someone could recognize that, you know, instead of um, saying no or not believe, maybe they could have found that, maybe it could have been something else. Those are could have bees, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. I'll do what I can. That's what inspires me to do what I can now on the time that I have left. Right. You know, so you can't say it's a bad thing, bad and good, it's irrelevant. You just use that to facilitate now, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But yes, I think it could have been, it could have been different, but you don't know where I came from. So I, it wouldn't have happened, maybe. Oh, the maybes, maybes. <laughs> but regardless, you, you are glad that you picked it up and really dove in. Yeah. What has painting taught you about yourself? I guess it's um, worth, you know, mm -hmm. just your own self-worth. And, and it is something that people say they can't do, but you, you can do. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's just self-worth, you know. Mm -hmm. What brings you the most joy when it comes to your work? People's faces, just when someone first sees my work. Mm -hmm. I, it's the, that moment when the expression that they, it's instantaneous. Mm -hmm. The smile, mm -hmm. the glint in the eye, that's, I call it food. <laughs> food for an artist, you know. <laughs> yeah, that I That moment never of recognition that. that someone sees it and smiles. Yeah, I can't imagine looking at your work and not enjoying it. It is just joyful. Well, thank you. So. Thank you for, for sitting down with me today and best of luck in, in all of future endeavors. Well, that will be what they will be. <laughs> <laughs> for more information, visit Curtis Jarrett Art on Facebook.